Using the network events in Playwright, we can easily see all of the requests and responses being made by our page when we load it up in the browser. This is interesting because not only can we see the URLs for both and the status code, but we can actually see the response data that's come back from wherever that request was made to, usually the back end of the website, which is an API. So we can actually filter this down and grab out any JSON data that's been sent back that we've made the request to from that page. Now this is the same as going to the network tab in your browser and having a look through, but we can hack together a script to make this whole part automated so we can just spit out some data at the end and we can say whether we want to pursue that or not. So this is the code that comes from the documentation and we can see here that we have this page dot on and the response and request that runs via a lambda function something to do. So in this case we're just printing out some information. This website won't work so let's just bung something else in here now for the moment and let's run this and you'll see that we get all of this information this is the URLs that and the type of HTTP uh, method that's been done so this is a get request to get these SVGs here now this is not particularly interesting in itself so let's put in a better website so let's do mba.com slash stats slash players and when we run it now, we'll get a lot more interesting stuff coming back. Loads more requests this one page has made than my other rubbish website. In here somewhere, there will be information that could be useful to us, but we don't just want to print out the URLs that we get. So let's go ahead, we don't care about the status. Let's change this one to the body. So we put in body here, and now we're gonna see the actual body of the response that's coming back. Loads of information, most of which is just no use, and even loads of errors to go with. We don't really just want all the body, we want actually just any request that has JSON data in, because we can easily pass that and do stuff with that. So let's run it again. Again, we're gonna get loads of errors. And if I scroll through this, you'll actually see that there is some actual player information on here coming from a specific part of the website. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hack the something up here. I don't care about the request or any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write my own little function that's going to pass any information in here and only give us anything that's actually JSON data and just dump the rest. So I'm going to do a new function in at the top and I'm going to say uh, def test JSON and we're going to give it the actual response from the server. And then we're going to do everyone's favorite. We're going to do try to print response. And then if that fails, except we're going to do something which you should never ever do. And we're just going to blatantly ignore it because this is just for testing this out for information gathering. We don't care. So don't hate me. So let's change this test.json uh, into here. Let's move that out of the way and we'll give it the response that it needs. So when we run this now, we should only get those responses spitting out the JSON information instead. So this is definitely much more what we're interested in. We can easily see the, the this all of these JSON responses that have come back from just loading this one page. So it gives us a good idea of what's going on without having to load it up and check through all the, the network tab manually. But let's go one step further and actually output this information to a file so we can check through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a results list that we're going to add everything to here. And I'm going to say that this will also need to be passed into our test JSON function because we're going to append to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to append our uh, results.append and we'll create a dictionary here. Let's create a dictionary. There we go. And we'll say that the URL is going to be response.url which we saw earlier and the data is going to be the response.json so only the responses that have json data will be appended like i just showed you and we're just going to leave this in here but to make everyone feel better i'll write bad in a comment so now we've got that done out out of our run function we're going to return the results list with all that good information in it then I'm going to change this to data is equal to because we want to store what comes out of this run function into a data, into our data variable. And then I'm going to do with open and we're going to have create a new JSON file. We'll just call this results.json and we need to have this W for write as F. Then we'll do json.dumps. Dump, dump, I think. And I'll give it our data list and our file. We need to import JSON so we have access to that. JSON, there we go. And that should 
be good. Let's run it again and we should get a JSON file at the end, which we can actually see all of that information come back. We can actually then decide whether we want, how we want to proceed doing this. Let's format this up using PyCharm and have a quick look at what we've got here. We can see there's some information here. Don't care about that maybe. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Uh, not interesting, maybe. Let's get rid of this one as well. Uh, some stats. Here's some more information. So this is starting to show you that we do get this JSON that we've intercepted back here. So let's change this to a different website because I want to show you that this one here works slightly differently in, res in the respect that we actually do need to load it up in the actual browser to get past, I believe, the uh, JavaScript, testing for JavaScript. So you can see we've got nothing back here. But if we make this headless is equal to false, so we actually open the browser. When the browser itself actually opens, I believe it's a uh, the JavaScript test with on that site, we do indeed get the information back here. So that's just something to bear in mind. And if we scroll down somewhere around here, one of these URLs actually gave us all the product information for that page. Let me just find that here. There we go. So here, here we go. This is the product with the price, etc., etc., and a URL. So I thought this was just quite a neat way of looking at the responses that come back when a page is loaded up in Playwright. So we have actually access to that rather than going all the way through our network tab in Chrome or whatever browser. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to like this one here, which talks much more about this sort of method for taking data from websites. So I think you'll enjoy that one.